is Apple CarPlay finally coming to all Teslas in 2022? Well, the answer might surprise you. It's yes and no. This is the dream though, right? It's the full power, the full customization of all the apps and widgets on your phone at uh, basically a finger's uh, tap away, seamlessly running alongside the simple, minimal UI that the Tesla has. CarPlay and Tesla just make so much sense, right? So why isn't it here yet? Let me break down everything we know about CarPlay on Teslas right now in 2022. What is it, when it's coming, and a couple of ways you can add CarPlay to your Tesla right now by yourself. Yes, it's not clickbait, you can add it to your car, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do it. And a huge thanks to Simply Carbon Fiber for sponsoring this video. They've got an incredible collection of some really sleek looking, super high quality carbon fiber accessories that you've gotta check out. But more on all that, in a bit. I know the idea of adding CarPlay or Android Auto to the Tesla can be a little controversial to get into. Some just love the simple, minimal Tesla interface and don't see the need to clutter it all up. And I totally get it. Uh, I, I get that point. Once you live with the car and you use Tesla software, you'll see not only is Tesla software really good, but also that maybe you don't really need any kind of Apple or Google software involved in there at all. Tesla just does it really, really well, better than any of the other guys. But at the same time, as you use Tesla software, you also start to see some of the shortcomings that the software has, and maybe that's when your opinion like mine kind of starts to change a bit. Not that the Tesla software isn't good, but there are definitely ways it can be substantially improved. And look, let me make it clear that I love Tesla software. I love what Tesla's doing. I think they're making great strides. It's simple, it's minimal, but it's also super advanced. And the Tesla software team has my utmost highest respect, but that's not to say that the software doesn't have its issues. And I'm not looking to complain here, but if we're being realistic, Tesla has an app problem. You are locked down to just the built-in options for music, movie streaming, games, maps, there is no virtual assistant support. The built-in text message support is just, let's just be honest, it's really bad. I could go on and on, but suffice it to say, Tesla could heavily benefit from some kind of third-party app store system. Specifically for music, for example, let's start with that. The addition of Spotify Premium and Tidal on your Tesla are nice, but what about all the other options that many millions and millions of people use around the world every single day? Apple Music, Amazon Music, you've got YouTube Music, you've got Audible, you've got different podcast apps. The ability to have your choice of different streaming apps would be nice. And that's kind of what CarPlay and Android Auto do and allow you to sort of have the beauty of that on other infotainment systems, plus a whole lot more. If you're a fan of Audible and you like audiobooks, you could have that sort of uh, integration built right in your car. Same goes for maybe sports streaming, Sirius XM, whatever the case may be, having those third-party streaming options is really nice. Same goes for Maps as well. Maybe you're not a Google Maps fan. Maybe you like the interface of Waze. Maybe you're a rideshare driver and you want to have sort of the Uber Eats or the Lyft apps sort of integrated into your mapping system and you want to have that up while you drive, that's something you can do with CarPlay or Android Auto that you just cannot do with the Tesla software for better or worse. Some say it could be a detriment to the software, it could clutter things up, but I think the beauty of choice is really important and it's time that Tesla gave us as customers more choice. As the owners and purchasers and drivers of these cars, we should have more choice and I for one want way more choices when it comes to music, media streaming, maps, it's time for more choice. CarPlay Android Auto would also give you better integration when it comes to the smarts of a virtual assistant built in. Text message support obviously would be substantially improved by having sort of the phone handle that stuff. And Tesla is making it better and it's nice that it's there, but it's just not the same. And I know some people really hate Siri or they hate uh, Google's virtual assistant, but just having it there would be nice. You could say, hey, uh, do this or do that or navigate to here or there. A virtual assistant in the car isn't absolutely necessary, but there are some sort of fringe benefits of having that, again, specifically when it comes to mapping, when it comes to messaging, it would be nice to sort of have those smarts built in and be accessible. It's like something, again, that Android Auto or CarPlay gives you that you can't do with the Tesla right now. You can do it over Bluetooth, but it's not the same as having it integrated right into the system. So if you could add CarPlay or Android Auto to the Tesla, if Tesla could just sort of open up this sort of window, allow them to have a sort of a windowed experience in there and sort of uh, fix a lot of these shortcomings, 
why doesn't Tesla do it? Why hasn't Tesla added car player Android Auto to their Tesla software? Well, I think there's really two answers as it stands right now, at least my best guess. Well, I guess three different answers uh, that I can give you uh, as a skeptic and uh, wannabe Tesla analyst. One, I think that it's highly rumored that Apple and Tesla don't have the best working relationship after those rumors of those failed partnerships and those bad Elon Tim Cook moments on multiple occasions. So I'm guessing Tesla doesn't want to really do anything to go out of their way to make Apple systems work on their cars. And I think that there is just a fractured relationship there. Tesla wants to sort of be better than CarPlay. And I don't think Tesla wants to do a lot of work to support any of Apple's services. And again, there is more than just, you know, allowing CarPlay to work is one thing, but keeping things updated and supported to work with CarPlay uh, now and in the future is another thing that Tesla would have to do. The second reason is that the implementation could be, I guess, well, I just sort of mentioned it, a lot to upkeep. To get the system supported on Tesla software would be sort of one thing to get it there, but then to keep getting it going would be another thing. Then there's the question of how does it get implemented? Does it get integrated into the system level? Is it just sort of a windowed experience? It just sort of runs as a window alongside the Tesla software. I'm not sure how that implementation would work. That'd be a whole UI nightmare and a mess. That uh, would be very confusing and something Tesla would obviously have to figure out in order to make this actually work on their cars. Now, before we continue with more of this Tesla CarPlay saga, let's take a quick break because I want to show you guys my new wallet, my new favorite wallet, and that is this super sleek, super pristine carbon fiber wallet made by this video sponsor, Simply Carbon Fiber. Let me show off my new wallet. It's made of this super sleek, super premium carbon fiber material and also has a great amount of storage on the outside and inside. So you can store some cash on the back and up to four to six cards easily on the inside. And I just cannot get over both the looks and the weight of this thing. Even loaded up with cards and cash, it is super lightweight, super easy to carry around. And if you put it in your pocket, in your front and back pocket, you're not gonna feel like you're loaded down by this big bulky wallet. I hate that feeling. This thing is super sleek, super lightweight, super pristine. And and I just love the look. And this thing is made from a solid block of carbon fiber. So not only is it minimal, it's sleek, it looks super cool, but it's got the carbon fiber strengths. It's lightweight and it's also super strong. So you're getting sort of all the benefits here of carbon fiber products in this super sleek wallet that is just really nice, really minimal. So if you guys want to pick up one of these super sleek card and cash slim carbon fiber wallets for yourself, which I recommend you do, love this thing, uh, just hit the link right down below to learn more, or you can head to simplycarbonfiber.com slash Robert. And while you're there, check out the wide variety of a really awesome carbon fiber products made by the fine folks over at Simply Carbon Fiber. They got a lot of really cool stuff on here. Watches, wallets, phone cases, lots of really cool stuff you guys want to check out for yourself today. And also you can save by using my special code at checkout Robert 10 to get 10% off your order. So again, click that link right down below the description, simplycarbonfiber.com slash Robert and use my special code at checkout Robert 10 to get 10% off your order. And then, of course, the other answer here, and probably the most obvious one, is that the Tesla App Store, Tesla's own App Store, is coming. We have heard lots of rumors and even some leaks that Tesla is working on their own App Store that will be sort of a direct competitor to CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, the pro and con here is that this is going to take a whole lot of work and time to develop, and developers would have to choose to devote their time and resources to this Tesla-specific uh, app platform in the App Store, but the end result could potentially be so, so much better than Android Auto or CarPlay running on your Tesla because these would be native apps that would be ground built rather from the ground up to work directly with your Tesla system. These apps could have this super seamless integration like they were really made and built with the Tesla in mind. They could have access to all the specific Tesla data that other apps couldn't have, whether it was uh, where you're going, your destination, uh, battery pack levels, your speed, you know, all, all the stuff that... Uh, the main car has access to, these apps could maybe have access to as well, the integration would just be way better overall and give a better experience to us as the end user. And it's obviously not here right now, and when it launches, it might take some time to get things up and running, but these apps have the potential to be so much better than Android Auto or CarPlay. And I think that's one of the big things here is that Tesla has sort of a choice to make. Do they want to devote the time and resources to getting CarPlay and Android Auto up and running and sort of keep that uh, implemented and running well on their cars for the foreseeable future? Or do they want to do something else? Do they want to build their own app store, have more control, and also give opportunity to Tesla to make some money in the process? I actually talked about more about why an app store makes so much sense for Tesla vehicles. I'll leave a link to that video down below and up here. 
up here. Uh, but I do think that it makes Tesla uh, a lot of money. It could potentially make them a lot of money and make sense for Tesla to sort of go their own path, build out their own thing. Instead of sort of waiting and sort of having to work around Apple and Google, Tesla could just build this themselves, make more money, and give ultimately a better experience again to you and I. But if you don't want to wait for the App Store to come just yet, and you do want to have CarPlay on your Tesla, is there a way to do this? Yes, yes there is, this is not clickbait. There are a couple of ways you can add CarPlay or Android Auto to your Tesla, and here's what you can do. If you are using Android Auto, if you're an Android user, there is actually a pretty good way to add this to your car right now. I'm not sure if this is out yet, but there is a, uh, I believe, a open beta or a limited beta of Android Auto running in the web interface on your Tesla. Here's some video of it in action. The developer did some really great work to get this working, and there is a pretty good way to actually get this working. I'll leave a link to it down below, but it does happen to work, and uh, if you are an Android Auto fan, there is sort of a workaround and a hack to get this on your screen working right now, sort of looking like it's directly supported from Tesla themselves. Now, if you are on the iPhone or want a way easier way to get things working on both ends here on iOS or Android, the best solution I can recommend is the Tesla Mirror app. This has been a lifesaver for me. I've used it a lot. This is not paid promotion by them or anything. It's just a really cool app. And essentially what this does, as the name suggests, is it mirrors whatever is on your iPhone screen to the screen on your Tesla through the web browser. This works whether you're in park or you're in drive. You can do whatever you want. Just abide by the laws of uh, for driving in your uh, territory or region around the world. But this works really well. And it's not the CarPlay interface or the Android Auto interface, uh, but it does sort of do the same thing. If you want to have Waze open while you drive, for example, that's probably the most popular thing. This will allow you to do that. If there's a ride sharing app or whatever you want to have sort of open at a glance as you drive, of course, being safe, you can do this with the Tesla Mirror app. It's like a couple of bucks in both app stores. It's very easy to get up and running and it works really well. It um, does what the name suggests and you can sort of have it mirrored up there and it mirrors your phone to the Tesla screen. Obviously, the downside here and the limitation is that it is mirroring what is on the screen to the screen of the Tesla. So it's not going to be a good interface. And also there's no touch control. So you can't touch and interact. It's just a mirror. So whatever touching and controlling you have to do, you got to do on the phone itself. So if you're just looking for a way to mirror the experience onto the Tesla screen, this is a great way to go. But if you do want to have control over the touch, that's not what this is going to let you do. Just a very clear uh, sort of uh, limitation. So you guys are aware of it. It's a mirror app. It's not a uh, full blown sort of wireless control app, just so you know. Another way you can do things is by buying one of these third-party displays and installing them in your Tesla. These will work with Android Auto, uh, Apple CarPlay. There's a number of really cool, sleek screens that almost look like they were made to go in the Model 3 or Model Y. Uh, here you can even buy on Amazon. I'll leave a couple links down below. And uh, this project is not for the faint of heart. I am not one that feels like ripping out my dash and running these cables. I don't feel like I could competently put it back together. But if you are up for the challenge and the task and you're okay with this and have some patience, these can be a really great solution. Solution. And not only do they give you CarPlay or Android Auto with all the apps and stuff like that, but even more customizations and you could have uh, a cool thing with your second screen. And there's a lot you could do with these screens. They're a couple hundred bucks and they really allow you to have a whole lot of customization on your Tesla. So this is a much nicer way, a more native way to get it. Obviously, you can't get it on the main screen itself. You basically have to add your own screen. Uh, but I will leave a couple options down below if you do want to install these because they do give you a full CarPlay or Android Auto right on your Tesla right now. It just takes a little bit of time to get it installed. But once you got it up and running, as you can see here, it seems to work really, really well. And I've talked to people who have had these installed themselves and they say they love them and they are definitely worth the money. So again, check them out if you want to install them yourself. A couple, uh, couple of options rather linked down below. I am also still following very closely this developer who is working to add CarPlay to the Tesla like natively within the browser. It's like a combination of a Raspberry Pi and some other uh, magic uh, trickery here to get this working. He has not released the info here just yet on how to do this, but it looks very close and it looks almost like it's ready for prime time. And when he does release this, I'll have a video on it. I will show you how to do it. I'll kind of walk you through the process step by step because this looks super cool. This is the best implementation I've seen yet. It's just not here just yet. The developer is still working on it. He's finalizing it, but he has confirmed to me that he does plan to release this to the public. So if you do want to do this yourself, you can. Again, it just takes a little tinkering, but it looks really good. So again, uh, be sure to stay tuned for that. As soon as that is released, I'll have a video on it. So I'm curious, guys, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on CarPlay on the Tesla? I know I've talked about this before. Some people love the idea. Some people don't like it. Again, an app store is rumored to be coming sooner than later this year. It looks like Apple or Apple. Uh, Tesla's already testing 
apps and hopefully we see some stuff really soon on exactly what this can be. What, but what are your thoughts? Uh, would you like to have CarPlayer Android Auto support built into the Tesla? Are you happy with the Tesla software as it is right now? Or do you have another idea of another way to get apps or fix some shortcomings uh, on the Tesla? Let me know your thoughts to all this stuff down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. As always, I'm Robert Rosenfeld and I'll see you all back here in the next video, hopefully coming in the next few days. So very soon. So thank you as always. I'll see you guys in the next one.